Welcome everyone to this week's IPLD Stink call. It's uh, August the 5th, 2019. And let's see what we have. So, oh, first of all, uh, is there any volunteer for taking notes? Thanks, Rod. Uh, it would also be cool if at one point someone else might take notes perhaps, but that's something for next week. So we start with going through a round of updates and what we did and things we plan to do. So um, I'm the first one, I just started with it. So I found out that um, there is a registry for CBO tags and we use, uh, for CBO we use tag uh, 42 for CIDs and it's already taken. Uh, back when it was decided to use this tag, it wasn't taken, now it is. Um, and we've opened an issue on the repository of the people that um, have registered the tag. And yeah, we're currently discussing and we hope that, so the hope is that we might be able to get this tag for our stuff, but we'll see. Um, then I did a bunch of stuff in the JS IPLD world, um, updated um, IPLD deck protocol buffer and JS IPLD and released it. Then I also updated the Linux FS. To use those releases, those were also already released by Alex. So now the only missing thing is updating JS IPFS, which sounds simple but isn't because we use a new version of IPFS repo, which is now using async await instead of callbacks. And so this needs to go through all the code base and a lot of IPFS stuff is using IPFS as repo, even the P2P does. So this is a bit of a bigger work, but I hope to finish it soon. Um, yeah, and then I will, I'm hopefully done for a long time with JavaScript stuff and can move on to my Rust stuff. All right, that's all I have. Um, next one is um, Eric. Oh, hi. Uh, lost my clipboard. So I got some new information from some of the other IPFS nodes running in the wild this last week about performance stuff and um, getting a bunch of PPROF files dumped from production let me identify some bottlenecks that were previously not so obvious in some of the refund code and the older generation of IPLD interfaces. Um, so I've learned a lot of things about reading uh, assembly output for the Go compiler this week, and that was fun. And now there are some nice performance improvements. So those were all over in the refumped libraries, um, but the refumped Seaboard parser is still what's being used in Go IPLD Prime as well. So those basically just instantly apply for free because they're transitives. So those are nice to have under the belt. Um, we, I think all of us did a lot of work in the last week on PRs to specs documents about like basic principle stuff as well. And I think there's still like three or four or so, um, some minor, some not so minor alterations that are proposed to that right now, which I think we should probably do a bunch of possibly synchronized review time on after this. It's, uh, I'm really glad that we've started doing some of that. Um, I'd also love to like land them sooner than later because they're just so important. So, yep, that's it for me. Thanks for the update. And next one is Rod. There's my audio. Am I on? Yep. yep. Um, so I've been a Go programmer this past week. <clears throat> uh, I got um, the hash map partially implemented on top of Go, P Go IPLD Prime. Um, so far, I'm, I can um, uh, iterate over all the the key values in a in an existing hash map data structure. Um, haven't quite wired up the bit where you go to a particular one, um, but I'm getting to it. But learning a lot about the way that Eric's done. Um, the, his IPLD implementation. 
and I'm trying to figure out how to adapt to that. Um, also getting my head around some of the challenges that Go programmers are bringing to uh, the discussions we're having. So it's, it's, you know, I had a moment last week where I had a click in my head um, with some of these discussions started to make a little bit more sense. Not that, not that, that they're nonsensical, but they, um, you know, they, there's this, there's baggage that we all bring and um, I can sort of see the, the pain that um, Go Pranger was bringing to the discussion. Um, so that was, that's interesting. Um, as, I, as I had in Slack uh, yesterday, looking at portability of uh, large test fixture data for testing across languages, I want to do um, uh, language independent test fixtures that can, that we can do the same assertions on in tests in multiple languages. So, and that's for complex data, not just these trivial little things that we tend to build for unit tests. Um, so, um, yeah, that's been some um, experiments there and also some experiments with um, just graph filtering and um, storage stuff. So that's, that's it for me. Thanks. Next one is Michael. Hey, you. Um, hold on, let me pull my notes here. Um, okay, yeah, so um, I've been off for a few weeks uh, for vacation, uh, but right before that, uh, we did have the OKR review call, which was much more of just kind of a general project review call. Um, so went over with, with a lot of people sort of where we're going and uh, what we've been doing recently. I've been sharing that feedback with different individuals um, and uh, also working a lot of that into some upcoming stuff that we're doing. So one is a sort of rebooting the, the, some of the UNIXFS conversations. Um, we have like a bucket called UNIXFS v2 that a lot of things have been dumped in for a long time. And um, one thing that I've realized recently is that some of those have very different priority than others. And some of them could be done as improvements to UNIXFS v1. Um, some could be worked into, you know, a mid version of UNIXFS v2 if we if we if we know that we're going to sign up for another update at some point in the future, we could do something in the interim that was actually pretty good and performant. Um, but it all depends on sort of what the priorities are of all these individual items. So I've done the work of breaking all those items out, linking to a lot of the history for all of those, and put that into a markdown document that I shared out um, that we'll be going through in a meeting on Thursday with the IPFS folks to try and get really distinct priorities and understanding of each of these individual issues so that we can then figure out what the best plan of attack is. Um, also, uh, there's this project advisory committee thing that we've been setting up. Um, we, I think eventually we're going to have them across all the protocol labs projects, but I think we're up, up I'm, do, I'm accelerating the timeline for ours um, because there's, it's a good way to gather feedback from other projects and we need to start doing that in a little bit more of a, a holistic way. So the first meeting is actually next week. So I've been preparing all the agenda for that. Um, so if any of you all have um, things that you want to have surfaced from other projects or questions that you would like to ask other projects, let me know about that uh, this week. I've also tasked a few people with just um, some items for that agenda um, that I can't write up myself because it's, it's the projects that you all are working on and not me. <laughs> um, and then um, the last thing I'll talk about a little bit is this um, this kind of like little nights and weekends thing that I've been hacking on called bundle sync. So the basic idea, um, so JavaScript uh, client side bundles are gigantic. Um, they keep getting bigger because Webpack makes it too easy to depend on things. Um, so as these get bigger, um, they become much more problematic to reload over and over and over again whenever so something even minor changes. And because the bundles are just a bunch of the same packages packed together all the time, it's sort of an ideal case for Rabbit, actually, um, because if you make minor change, changes to your bundle, it would actually only change a few hashes in a big Rabbit piece. Um, so I started writing this thing that would uh, load up in the browser and then could actually just sync the bundle after the, so after you've get, gotten it once, um, you can always just resync those parts from the Rabbit bundle. Um, this has been a very interesting use case for IPLD because this little piece of code has to load before anything else can load in the page that you're syncing. And so um, it actually like has an insane amount of constraints on the size that it can be. Um, so I haven't been able to use like any of the libraries that we've ever written in JavaScript for IPLD <laughs> because all of them are too big for a thing that you would load before your actual code. Um, and I've kind of compressed all of these ideas down into 
these like really uh, tiny libraries for just, just to get the syncing piece up and running. Um, and I've been working with Cloudflare workers actually to do the kind of storage and piece because then all of the parts that are in that Robin bundle are also edge cached and all of the syncing logic is also on the edge. So you don't lose any of that um, nice CDNing stuff because Cloudflare has this nice worker thing. Um, but also Cloudflare workers have like no debugging. So <laughs> it's like it either works or it doesn't. And if you want to debug something, you have to like put it in the response body. So that's been really fun to work with as a development environment. But um, it's it's been really illuminating for me just in that we have a lot of separations that are conceptual in a lot of our documentation. And then we've realized a lot of those separations in code. Um, and then coming at it from a completely different angle, we don't have that code that shows the separations. Figuring out where those um, different pieces really belong has been really, really interesting. Like I've, I've had to actually go and write a new block format that is like compressed and doesn't require a bunch of, it, it doesn't require any external hash functions and stuff like that. Um, and it's interesting how well a lot of the conceptual layers hold up even when you don't have our kind of code layer. So that's been really great learning a lot from that. Um, and that's it for my update. Uh, okay, Rod asked what PAC means. PAC is a, a project advisory committee. That's what it stands for. So the idea of these, these PACs is that um, we gather the internal stakeholders uh, like in, in protocol labs to so the other projects essentially, and those project leads. Um, and we have a much more structured environment for us like um, updating them and getting their feedback. Because as these projects grow, you can't just like, understand everything that's going on in every project. Like David did that for a long time and I, it kind of grows me crazy, I think. <laughs> Reading every email ever <laughs> about every issue. Um, but also uh, eventually these projects, th this first one is only um, the internal people, but eventually we're gonna bring in external advisors as well. So people from other outside projects, other people that are just um, people that we would like to get advice from in this space in general. So one of the items in the first one is who should we invite to that? That's, a, I hope, a good enough description of what's going on there. Um, any other questions about that before we move on? Cool, all right, all done. Cool, thanks. Um, Steven, I guess, as every week, you don't have any items for IPLE. All right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, so is there any, so did anyone put anything on the agenda. I can't see anything, but you can just also raise your hand and just bring something up. Anyone want to go over the spec PRs? Slash Stephen, have you had a chance to look at any of those? Because I briefly looked at them. I have not had a chance to read them yet. OK. Yes, I know uh, I need to read them. Yeah. And yes, there are quite a few now. I mean, they're all, so, it's not more text than the original. It's just literally that split up into a bunch of smaller. No, no, I, I just need to like load back in all of the IPLD state. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is why I'm trying to batch it up. So like I click, I load everything in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I should do this before tomorrow. Or no, when's the pack? The pack yeah, is next week. next week. Okay. Um, yeah. So I definitely need to do this before next week. So I load back in all the state before I go to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so to, to Eric's point in scheduling just a call for us to iterate on the last few points, I'd like to schedule a call where we actually knock through kind of all the specs in that repo, because there's a bunch of older ones that we should just look at and just decide to merge or not, um, because I mean, th there's like stuff in there for DAG PB that like, we're not changing it, <laughs> so we should probably just merge it. <laughs> I mean, I hope that we're not changing it. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and then yeah, yeah, and like because it, it, it does get a bit confusing trying to build on top of it because there's so many open PRs. So um, yeah, but I get like I guess I would so I would probably do it first, do an async uh, run through the specs so I can totally do it. And basically, so basically at, at the bottom you have a comment saying okay, like this is what I think should happen, and then we can just quickly decide okay, we do it, we don't do it, we merge it, we close it, whatever I think. Um, so, so I guess there's certainly specs where we need to should do in sync and just like banging things out and get it done, get it merged. But I think there's a few other PRs where we just can do it as synchronously, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, well, let's let me see here. Let me look at my schedule real quick. Um, would if we did it Wednesday morning for me, which is evening for most of you, I think probably 
Thursday morning. For <laughs> 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 no, no. Rod, what, what, Rod can't be on a call at this time, actually, probably. So, um, but um, and and yeah. and and what if we if we do it, for example, like next week instead of this meeting, or like quickly after this meeting, or like I don't know. That works for me. I think that that you, because like because I guess it would be important that basically all of us are in the call. So <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. To find yeah a okay, that's that's the best idea. I was trying to knock it out this week, but I actually do have a lot of stuff on my plate this week. So um, that'll give us plenty of time to do async review of everything that's there, and then we can yeah. go top to bottom next week, knock through. Cool. Yeah. All right. I, I think we might benefit from like at least two sessions. Like we want to land all of the smallish ones that are out now smallish but impactful mm -hmm. and then like the backlog grooming i think we should make maybe a separate day so we go into that one fresh rather than exhausted mm -hmm. from the earlier bits i would love to get us down to um inbox zero on issues and prs i, mm -hmm. I dislike that number being anything more than absolutely none i am sure that's going to take a lot of work but mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to have a short list at the start of such a gathering time also of like what are some different ways that we can take things that are good content or good earlier brainstorming and acknowledge them but then get them out of the inbox mm -hmm. like there's a whole bunch of that stuff that i imagine maybe we could pivot into files in the design history or like maybe we can do the thing where we do a git merge where we do the s hours flags so that like stays in history but doesn't contribute to the diff anymore or etc because there is there's definitely lots of stuff out there that's like that that's good ideas mm -hmm. i just don't want it to be acting like it's in an inbox when it's obviously not being acted on anymore like that yeah are you, sorry are you talking issues or or um yeah. stuff in the yeah. Yeah. it's the number that shows up on those top tabs on github it's acting like it's in an inbox, and if it's not yeah. being acted on, there. So issues can be moved to a separate notes repo. I think we already have one, uh, which is specifically for things that are not being acted on. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, pull request should be closed. Yeah. I, I just flat out hate GitHub issues for many, many reasons. Yeah, and like dot threaded and all that kind of crap. Yeah, but we don't have a better solution at the moment, unfortunately. Like we can we can spin up a Discord server. Uh, no Discord, sorry, yeah, discuss. Not Discord, discuss. Uh, I've, I've heard we have one somewhere. I also think when in doubt, putting that content in a summary file and putting it in like some sort of a history repo directory is actually way way better because you can link to those. Like you can link to the yeah. Internet. It makes it harder to actually like revive a discussion. Although honestly, I guess the best way to revive a discussion is to create a new issue and link to the old discussions. Um, exactly. Yes. Yes. But that's why I, I, I'm personally a fan of closing issues like that, where you say like this is a good idea, it's a good discussion. We could, like if you want to make a new discussion, you start a new one, you link to the old ones. Um, also good. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, we have like a bunch of spec refining issues from Nicola in 2016 that we can probably just close out. <laughs> basically just being stale um i mean they're stale at this point like they're yeah they're yeah. not we would need to, to create a new one in order to yeah. okay cool um yeah i mean a lot of clearing up these issues we can just do like we don't need to have a meeting about that um but just specs require a bit more discussion i think cool if you ever want to feel better about your issue trackers just take both the go fast one Always works every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Okay. If that's all, then I close the meeting and see everyone next week to the PR issue closing session. <laughs> Bye. Um,